All right, welcome everybody to the um, second gathering of the Muslim Community Center from the Bay Area. And we are gathering together so many of you, even from Brunei, to work today on Ghazali's book of purification. And the children may think, well, why? But I'm sure all of you who are eight years old, you're starting to pray and you need to know why is wudu important? And we have a brother named Hamza Yusuf. Now I'm gonna try to, um, to share screen. How do I do? Oh, I see it. All right, I'm, I'm learning. Um, Munir is teaching me everything. So then let me get this. Aha, all right. Can everyone see that? Yes. All right, so children, uh, this is the book of Ghazali we're gonna be working with. And I'm sure you all know our wonderful brother Hamza Yusuf. And he wrote the introduction to this book. And he wanted you all to know, children, that we are 70% made out of water. And that water, as you all know, is the basis for life. With, could, there be, could there be any life on earth if there wasn't water? It's, it's the most important thing. And if there weren't rain, we wouldn't have things to eat. And also we use water to clean dirt. If we get dirty, if our clothes get dirty, if our hands get dirty, we clean that dirt off. But by the way, what we're talking about today is not getting dirt on your hands. It's the dirt you get on your heart. And last week when we did the book of knowledge, we talked about all the kinds of things that can get dirt on your heart, like gossiping or being angry or arguing, you know, all those kinds of things. And that really hurts your heart. And I bet all of you know one thing, if you've done something wrong, doesn't your heart feel bad? You can feel it, can't you, right? And so it's interesting to know that the word wudu in Arabic happens to mean what makes you shine. Can you imagine even wudu, wuda, means to make you shining. And so it's very important that we learn about wudu. And um, let me just change the picture here. Oh, I'm learning, I'm learning all this from Muneer, right? Aha. Uh -huh. And so we regularly wash our bodies and we also regularly have to wash our hearts, right? And children, when you all go to pray, imagine if you were just watching television and running around and being silly and playing with Legos and dolls and suddenly you immediately stood up to pray. How could you go from all that to standing before God, wouldn't you need a transition? You need a transition, something that takes you from one world into the next. And that is what we are going to be doing with Wudu. Now, as you know, we have wonderful Hajj Abdullah, and he is the one that teaches the children. In the story, the children are walking home from school one day, and they're talking to each other. And one of them said to the other, oh, you know, I don't know why we have to pray. And the other said, yeah, my mother gets really mad if I'm late for prayers. And they finally they thought, do we, we don't know. We, we don't know why we have to pray. Why do we have to make wudu? Why? And then they thought, oh my goodness, look at this magic door. There's a secret garden here. Let's go inside. And they thought, who are we gonna get to answer our questions? And then they remember, Oh, sitting in the park every day is wonderful Hajj Abdullah. He's a very old man. And oh, the birds love him and the squirrels, all the animals come to him, sit in his hands, stand on his shoulder. So they went to him and they said, Hajj Abdullah, would you come to our secret garden and answer our questions? And he said, yes, children, I will. And he said, but I'm not going to answer your questions through what I know. I'm going to answer your questions through what the great Imam Al-Ghazali teaches us, because he gives us the inner meanings of what everything really means. And he said, you know, um, in the Quran, in the Quran, purity is key to prayer. It's the door to prayer, right? And so I'm going to tell you a story, he said. Oops. All right, story. Okay, here's the story, children. Once upon a time in an Islamic town, there was a scholar. Do you see him on the right with the hat and the long blue gown? 
and the scholar was standing in his doorway and an old man came by with his stick. And he said, I want to, what he said to the scholar, what is wudu? I want to know what is wudu? And the scholar said, oh, old man, get out of here. How can somebody as old as you living in our Muslim town, how can you not know about wudu, right? And the old man just kept saying, no, what is wudu? I want to learn wudu. And Hajj Abdullah continued the story. He said, he said, finally, they, they kept saying to the old man, leave, leave, go out of here. Get out of here, old man. And then the scholar, the one you see here on the left, he was very worried, children. He thought, my goodness, that old man, who could he be? So the scholar had a doorkeeper, a man who helped him. And he said, follow the old man, see what's going on. And of course, what happened is the, the doorkeeper came back to the scholar and said, oh, scholar, I'm sorry to tell you this, but that old man that you shooed away, he is the saintly, knowledgeable sage. He's the wali of our town. So the scholar, you know what the scholar did? He put on his good robe. He, he followed the old man. He went to where the old man was sitting and he kneeled down and he kneeled down and he said to the old man, please tell me what is wudu? And the old man said to him, oh scholar, when you wash your hands in wudu, you know children, we all wash our hands, right? When you wash your hands, you think, oh, you think, Oh Allah, forgive me for what I have been doing. Help me to do the right thing. And then when you rinse out your mouth, you say, Ya Allah, you know, forgive me that I've said some bad things. Please remind me to say good things. And then when you, when you, when you, for example, wash your feet and you say, Ya Allah, please. Let my feet take me to somewhere wonderful. Don't take me to places that are not good. And you wash your ears. Oh, don't let me hear horrible things. Don't let me listen to bragging and listen to gossip. Let me only listen to good things. And so, so, that, was, so that was the answer of what is wudu. Now look here at this picture. Here's some drawings. You see the scholar sitting on the left in his chair. You can pick what words that best describe him. Is he patient, friendly, angry, or proud? Which would you say? Probably angry and proud, right? Right? And here you see how mad he is. He's being very mad at the old man because the old man is doing the wudu wrong. Because after the scholar taught him to do wudu, the old man did it backwards and wrong. And the scholar said, get out of here, right? And then let's see, turn the page. Oh no, that is not nice. What? No sound? Can you hear it now? We can hear you, yes. Okay. So then, when the scholar went to visit the village elder, what did he learn? Circle the correct words. You see, now the scholar on the right is praying behind the old man. And what, do, what are the words that would describe him best? Would you say the anger, humility, pride? Silence, peace, bragging, greed, spying, or praying uh, during uh, praying during wudu. What would you, you would some children like to say? What are the words that describe the old man? Go ahead and raise your hand if you'd like to, <laughs> or unmute yourself, please. Uh. <laughs> Silence and peace. Good. Silence and peace. Excellent. That's a very that's very good. I think that's I think she's given the best answer. So then, you know, um, when you all do your own wudu, you have to do this yourself. You can't just wash your hands and rinse out your mouth and your nose and wash your face. You have to be always thinking, what what should I really be? What should I really be saying? Don't just come and quickly do it like this. This is a great opportunity to get very near to Allah and to be really doing the right thing. 
So Imam al-Ghazali is going to teach you how to do that. You know, when you're, when you're washing your face, for example, you know, you, you, could, you could be taking off the outer dirt, but is the outer dirt what you want to wash off? Or is it something on the inside you want to watch off, wash off? Would some child answer? Inside. inside. Yes. Inside. Yes. What kinds of things inside. on the inside do you want to wash off? Bad thoughts. Bad, Bad thoughts. deeds. Bad deeds. Um, the insider. Maybe you're angry. Maybe you don't share. Or maybe you're greedy. Bad deeds. Are hating something in the anger. Exactly. Exactly. Bad so what you're washing Ooh. off when you're doing wudu is it is it a lot of outward dirt or you're washing off dirt that's got on your heart? On your heart. On your heart. Right. You're very good. That got on your heart. Yeah. Very good. Okay. So, okay. Now I'm going to tell you a story, and Munir is going to put on a little video. Can I tell you the story first? Ghazali said, okay, everybody listen to this carefully, children. Ghazali said, if a king came to visit you at your house and you were expecting a king, like Allah, would you polish the front door and leave garbage on the inside of the house? In other words, would you make yourself look really beautiful and wear very attractive clothes and inside you're full of hate and greed? Would you do that? Well, what we're going to do is Munir is now going to show you a film made by my two grandchildren when they were little, and they made a play, a little film about this. So Munir, can you show this? Yes, I can. If you can hit stop share on your stop screen. Share. Please. Okay. Thank you. My sister and I made a cardboard castle out of a box we had. My brother and I made a cardboard castle. And we both painted the windows gold. And we both we painted both the outside gold and decorated it to, to make it pretty on the outside. Then we dumped garbage on the inside. This project was to remind us of Imam Ghazali's stories. Of Madame Ghazali's story. <laughs> if you invited a king to come to your home. To visit your house. Would you just polish the outside and shine the door? Just polish the door. What would the king think if he finds trash inside? Oh no! There's trash inside the golden castle! It would be like you only wash the outside of your body and leave the inside full of bad things! Ooh. Like not sharing and bad moods and not helping mama. You can make a box castle too! You can make a box castle Two. Two. To remind you that being clean on the inside matters most to God. That's what matters to the God most. Did you all enjoy that? Yeah. Yeah. To make. yeah, that was fun. Yeah, that was yeah. fun. My grandchildren made it to illustrate that, that they fun. understood that you don't want to have something horrible on your heart and look good on the outside, right? I'm from Aisha, let this to everybody. I would love it if you all made films too. You, you learn oh, things you from and then you make the films too. Let's see what we're going to see next. Okay, can I go back to screen share? Here we go. Right, then I'm going to share. And then I go to the next one. Just a minute. Ah, all right, children. Um, 
there are different levels of 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 purification, right? And there's different levels. There's one level in which you you purify your your body, and the next is you've got to purify your heart, right? Okay. And how do you do that? It's that you're very careful when you're doing your wudu. You wash your hands, and also you're thinking. Allah, don't let me do that anymore. You're washing your ears and you're saying, oh, I've been listening to bad things. I'm sorry. I want to listen to only good things. So that's the next level, right? There are all these levels, like in a tree house, you know, levels of, of, of how you can purify yourself. But the lowest is just washing dirt off your hands. The next up is really thinking about you know, what you're st you want to stop doing and while you're making wudu, asking Allah to keep, take your feet in the right direction, right? And then the real thing you're trying to do is make your heart completely golden. Isn't that right? Don't you all want to have a golden heart? Well, you already have a golden heart. All you've got to do is watch and stop doing some of the, some of the little things that you don't want to do anyway, right? And you can pretend it's like that. You can pretend you're like a warrior, a hero, or a heroine, and you've got different dragons you want to conquer. Now, some of the dragons, look down below what it says. Some of the dragons you want to wash away backbiting, bragging, hypocrisy, being angry, arguing, spying, not helping, not sharing, being selfish, being mean, being greedy. So if you have any of these dragons that you want to wash away, you can just stop doing them because you'll think about them when you're doing wudu. So then, uh, this, then Haj Abdullah said, I'm also going to tell you some other things you have to know about, right? Um, um, you should know, everybody, children, that Allah doesn't look at your bodies or if you're rich and poor. Allah looks at your heart. So that's the thing you want to, that's your goal, to have a great heart. And also, he doesn't want you to like uh, over, over stress out about every detail of your wudu. Am I getting it right? Did I do it just right? Does it look just right? Allah says, be very careful. That's what Ghazali says. Don't overwhelm yourself getting every detail exactly perfect. Better to get the inside of your heart perfect. Better stop talking badly. Better start being kind, right? And so then um, there are a few things before we do we'll do that we're going to talk about. Some of things about outward purity. You see the little boy has a dog. Now in Islam, uh, dogs and pigs are considered to not be very clean if you have a wet, if you Contact, contact them with a wet hand. And there are things like rocks, things that aren't alive, they're pure, except for wine, right? And then the two animals we talked about are pigs and dogs, but look down to the third thing. Things that, things that are dead are not clean, but a human being is clean even if a human is dead. A fish is clean even if it's dead. A bug is clean, but not a cat. A worm can be clean. A bird can be dirty. So there's some things that are clean and some things that are dirty. And so you don't want to you don't want to touch things that are that will that will make you dirty. You have to be careful with that, right? Now, let's say you're a little girl and you have some chicken soup and you're pouring it into this big pond of water. Could you make wudu in the big pond of water, even if it has chicken soup? What does anyone think? Do anyone out there have an idea? I think yes. Yes. No. Yes. Why? Why do you think it would be okay? To what? Even though she poured chicken soup in the pond, why do you think the water would still be pure enough for wudu? Because, because more because water? Because, 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 because I... Because, because I... Water? You're right. Because, because I heard water. chicken soup. That chicken? Yeah. Because I remember my um, sister and my mom talking about it. Well, it's it's little because you see, if you look down here, uh, Ghazali says, um, well, it's in Islam, water itself is clean and pure, but if there's something in it or touching it that changes its color 
or its taste or its smell, then you can't use it for wudu, right? Let's say there was a dead, you have a small pond of water and somebody threw a dead cat in it. Oh, soon the water would taste bad and smell bad, right? You couldn't use it. But if you just pour a small pot of chicken soup, it's lost in the water. But you wouldn't make wudu in chicken soup, would you? No. So you want water that is pure to make your wudu. You see, she's pouring something into that water, but not enough to change the water. Now, have any of you all ever seen a sawak, that little tooth stick that you clean your teeth with? Yeah. yeah. Have you seen it? I have it in my home. Like, it's just like a toothbrush. Yes. It's like a toothbrush. And then this is something the prophet, the messenger of God, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Verily, truly, your mouths are pathways of the Quran. The Quran, you say Quran. So sweeten them with a tooth stick. Mm -hmm. So even when you pray, do you, there's passages from the Quran, right? So wouldn't you clean your mouth before you pray if there's going to be passages of the Quran? You would. And, they, and also we're told that a prayer that you pray and you just brush your teeth or use sawak. You can just brush your teeth normally before you pray. If you brush your teeth before you pray, that is better than 75 prayers that you could do without brushing your teeth. And there's this question in the workbook. Imam al-Ghazali, number four, mentions that the prophet didn't want to make things difficult for his followers. For this reason, he didn't ask everyone to do what before each prayer? Use the toothbrush. Really, it's so important for you to use the toothbrush, but the prophet didn't say you had to do it. You had to do it. It was like a law because he didn't want to make difficulties. There might be a day you might be somewhere and you couldn't brush your teeth and you wanted to pray. Wouldn't that be right? Yeah. Yes. Yes, exactly. That's true. So now, so we don't want to, people, he, the prophet was, peace and blessings be upon him, was so kind, and he didn't want to make it difficult. Let's say you're out on a picnic, and you want to do your prayers, and you don't have any water to, to brush your teeth. Your prayers will still be wonderful. You know, isn't that good? Alhamdulillah. So now... Uh, I'm going to do something else. I've got a chart here. So now we're going to talk about Now I'm going to uh, stop sharing and talk to you myself. All right. I'm going to try to do this. Okay. I'm back. All right. Now, children, this is getting very serious. You're about to make wudu, right? Maybe you've brushed your teeth right? Because we're going to learn how to do it the right way. Imam al-Ghazali says, before you make your wudu, right? Say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Everybody say it. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So can you all remember before you do wudu to say Bismillah? You will, right? By the way, there's yes. a hadith there's a hadith that Imam al-Ghazali mentions, and, he, and it says, if you don't mention God before you pray, your, your wudu isn't complete because you, you want to have Allah with you to protect you from any whisperings or bad suggestions. So it's very important that you mention the name of Allah. So don't just run in and do your wudu. First, you're gonna to try to brush your teeth, right? Second, you're going to say Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Isn't that right? And the next thing we always do before you pray or anything, you do an intention, niya. Do you know what a niya is? Even when you're fasting, you say, I intend to fast tomorrow. Do you see what I mean? So when before you start your wudu, you stand there and you say, I intend to do my wudu to remove any dirt, any impurities so that I am able to pray. And you know what Imam al-Ghazali said? If you can just keep that good intention with you, you're doing your hands and mouth and face. If you can hold that beautiful intention right up until you get to your face, this will like 
this will take you to like a, a paradise. It's so important if you can do that, right? So now what we, we've all talked about, uh, what I've done today, because I'm gonna put this in my bathroom where I do, I made a chart for myself. Do you see my chart? And I put each thing, what to say when I do my hands and my mouth. So I'm gonna tell you, this is gonna, because now I'm gonna do it the right way. So when I'm ready to do my hands, right? Of course, we're thinking, we're thinking something very nice. We're thinking as I'm washing my hands, your hands are what you use to do things with. Oh, Allah, I'm sorry, uh, I did what I did today, it was wrong. It helped me to do the right thing. And then you say this, you say a, a beautiful prayer, you know, asking Allah to, to, to guide you, you know, with your hands. And there's also something Imam al-Ghazali says, as you wash your right hand, right? And you do it three times, you could ask Allah, when you, when you die, you know, in the end, Allah gives you your book of all the good you've done and all the bad you've done. And you say, Ya Allah, as you're washing your hand three times, could you, could you please give me my book back in my right hand, you know? And then the next, of course, is you've done your hands, you rinse out your mouth, right? Remember, does everyone know that you rinse their mouth? And this is the prayer you say, and I've written it on my chart. Ya Allah, help me in the recitation of your book and to remember you abundantly, right? And also, as you're doing your mouth, children, this is what I want you to think. From now on, I want to say beautiful things. I want to praise Allah. I want to praise people, right? I don't want to say bad things, right? And also, I'm going to think about things I take into my mouth. Should it just be candy or should it be some good food, right? And then do I talk all the time screaming and making noise? Maybe with my mouth, I should be quiet. Does that sound like a good idea, everybody? Sure. Yeah. These are the things with your mouth. Okay, so now I'm going to go um, back to screen share. All right. Here's a little boy, right? He's rinsed his mouth. Like, and he's now reciting Quran, right? He said, um, and I will also be asking him to help me only say beautiful, helpful things every day and maybe to be a bit more quiet. All right. And here are these little boys, they're, 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 they're uh, reading some Quran, right? And then the next thing is, you know, after you rinsing your mouth, do you know you put some water up in your nose? Do you all remember that? And, and then you yes. think, I can just imagine the garden of paradise where all the scented flowers, breathing in drops of clean water, seems to be a kind of way to connect to the fountain in the garden of paradise. So when you all are putting a little water in your nose, oh, imagine you're connecting back to paradise, right? See these children here, they said, what could the smell of these flowers in the garden remind us of? Paradise, right? So as you're rinsing your nose, you're, you're connecting all the way back to the, the garden and the fountain in the center of paradise. And then your face is very important. It's what we first notice about one another. Imam al-Ghazali said that an excellent prayer when you're cleansing the face is to say, oh God, brighten my face with your light on the day when the face of your friends are brightened. And do not darken my face with your darkness on the day when some people's faces will be dark. You see, you wanna have a, so when you're rinsing your face, you want your face to be completely shining. Isn't this little girl beautiful? Look at her. So also when you are rinsing your face, you start, excuse me. I'll just keep talking. Is it all right? I'm going to pull screen. I hear some questions. Never mind. All right. Children, when you're doing your face, you start way up here at the top where the hair is, and you come all the way down, you know, over, over near the ears and everything like this, right? And then, then when you get the water over your eyelashes, you can put your index finger right here 
and get right here in the eyes. You want to get it all really good, right? Now, if you're if you're putting if you're rinsing around your eyes, what are some of the things you could ask your eyes to do, right? You could ask your eyes to do. You you don't want to say, oh, don't do any spying, right? Don't look at horrible things. Don't look at horrible movies. Look at beautiful things, right? Look at beautiful qualities in others. Think how beautiful what I'm seeing is, right? Yes. What else? Some children, what would you all like to say? What are the kinds of things you want to see that you should be seeing with your eyes and the things you shouldn't look at? Tell me. You shouldn't look at bad things. You shouldn't look at. You shouldn't look at that shaitan. You uh -huh. shouldn't look at Allah. And what are some of the things that are good that you would love to look at? Flowers. Uh, you could. Flowers. You could look at. Um, yeah. You could look at things. Uh, things. things. Like, you can think of of um of like all of the good thi things that are in life life and, and, you can, and like look at them in your mind. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. Are there any others? All the pretty stuff that other made. Yes. And you wouldn't spy on anybody, would you? No, no. And and and. Oh. Yeah. You would use your eyes to actually, you know, and people's eyes, look how beautiful this little girl's eyes are. They're so bright. Do you think she's looking at something horrible or she's looking at something beautiful? Yeah, something beautiful. Yeah. Then let me go to yeah. the next picture. All right. Now, beautiful. what'd you say? Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Say it a little louder. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yes, beautiful. Now, this little boy, right? So, so he, I, I have an idea. You could look at somebody doing good deeds. That's wonderful. That's great. I'm doing good. So, for La and your. That's beautiful. So now I'm gonna tell you after you finish, right? After you finish your face, you know, let me um, put my face back on so I can show them. Maybe I'll um, speak properly. Yeah, you see, you know, you do your arms, everybody, right? And you have to be careful. The prophet said, peace and blessings be upon him, you know, extend the where you're washing very far right and if you're doing your feet go up your ankles because these are all places these are all places where well that everywhere place you do in wudu will be light for you all over your body right and then then um this is the shining forearms yeah now another thing Let's talk about the top of the head, all right? He says you should put your fingertips together like this, right? And when you start right here at the top of your hair and go all the way over your head, all the way down to your back of your neck. And you know what you're supposed to say when you're doing that? Okay, I've written my prayer right here on my poster for the bathroom. As you, as you do that, you say, Oh Allah, cover me with your mercy. Send down upon me your blessings and shade me in the shade of your throne on the day when there is no shade except your shade. Don't we all want mercy? So when we're doing this, you can ask Allah for his mercy to be all over you. Isn't that beautiful? And then you know what you're supposed to do next? We forgot about the ears. You stick your wet fingers in, the, in your ear holes and then you take your thumbs behind your ears and you come around like the letter C, like that, right? And then um, when you do that, um, here's something you're supposed to pray. Here's the, here's the prayer. I'll read it. Oh, Allah, make me among those 
who hear what is said and follow the best of it. God, let me hear the one who will call, let me hear the one who will call to heaven and for me to be righteous. So we want to listen to good words, but also we have to ask, what are some of the best sounds you can listen to? Do you think car traffic or nature? What do you all think? Nature. 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 I think it's nature. I yeah, think it's nature. It says the blue no, sound nature. is nature. Nature. The same words. Now, also, children, when you finish washing over your head and doing your ears, you then come from the back of your neck forward like that. So you come around with your neck. And the next thing you start to do, by the way, is your feet. Okay, I've got something amazing to tell you all, all right? You've got to be very, you've got to listen very carefully, all right? I'm going to, I put up a little sign. You see the feet that I've drawn here? Do you see these two feet here on my drawing? Can you see? All right. You start yes. with the right foot, with your right foot, but you, you clean between your toes with your finger on your left hand. And you start on the little toe here and go up like a mountain, little toe up to the big toe. And then you come down the other side. You come up the right foot and down the left foot. Can you see that? Can you see that very carefully? You're going to have to draw your own, you know, and that's how you do it. And if, if you're going to cut your toenails, there's another way to do it. It's in the book, you know, but you start with the right foot first. And by the way, you, when you finished your feet, all right, maybe, maybe, maybe you want to ask what kind of prayer would you like to ask a lot about your feet taking you where, okay? What would you all like to say, children? Take my feet to do something good or take my feet? What, what are the things you want your feet to take you? To do you? good things. To do me to not an Islamic place. place. Yeah. You don't want walk to get to take and wash my feet and do a do. That's it. That's wonderful. So we want our feet to take us. Now here's something, everybody, children, that I never knew until I read Ghazali. And so I put it on my chart. After you finish your feet, right? After you finish your feet, okay, we say the Shahada. You know what the Shahada is? Uh what, who knows what the shahada is? That's it. That's it. All right. Now, Ghazali says that if you remember to say the shahada when you finish your wudu, before you pray, it opens eight gates to paradise. And you can pick any gate you want to go through. And he says, it, then he says, you say, at, you can say the Shahada, and if you want, you can say this prayer too. <inaudible> That's very good. And here's the prayer. Oh God, I turn to you in repentance. So forgive me and accept my repentance. You truly are forgiving and compassionate. Oh God, make me among those who turn to you in in repentance and make me among your righteous servants and make me your patient and grateful servant among those who are glorifying you early and late. And Ghazali said, if you can say this, this, this prayer and the Shahada, after every wudu you do, it will rise up. And when you, at the end of your life, it will be waiting for you at the thr throne of God. But, but, uh, but also Ghazali said, if this prayer is too long to say, all you have to do is say the Shahada. So can everyone say the Shahada when they finish their wudu? I think what parents and children need to do is everybody needs to make a nice chart in the bathroom, right? Okay, make a chart like, like mine, brush your teeth, Say the Bismillah, right? Say the Bismillah. Make an intention. 
And then what you do, the hands all the way through everything. And then finally you end up and say, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. And then you're ready to pray. Can everybody do that? Would you work with your mothers and fathers and make a really simple chart and put it in the bathroom? And what I want you to do is don't just go in there and do this and do this. What are you going to do oh, each time you do something? You're going to do something good, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. Now, let me see what I have else for you to see. Oh, wait, I've got to go back to share screen. I'm learning all of this. All right. Okay, open this. All right, so now let me see what else I have. Munir is my great teacher. All right. So this lovely little girl here, right? Um, this, this lovely little girl is gone. Her feet have taken her where? Do you know what she's doing? Can you tell what she's doing? Washing the plates. Yes. Washing the dishes. Yes, exactly. So it's her, like she's washing the dishes. That's right. So her mother, her mother, she went and helped her mother. She didn't just go and play in her room or watch TV. Her feet, her feet took her to do the right thing. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I had a question that I would like to ask. Go ahead. What's your question? So I wanted to ask if I set up a little like skit using stuffed animals about hypocrisy. Yes. So I wanted to share that if we have time. For some reason, I'm not hearing you clearly. I think it's because you have a mask on. Can your mother or somebody tell me, what, what are you saying? Say very clearly. So I wanted to say that I have a lesson to teach about hypocrisy. Yes. And I wanted to say if we had time, if I could share it. Wonderful. We only have three more things to go through. So would you do it afterward? Yeah, yeah, I can do it afterwards. Oh, no, you go ahead and do it now, right now. Go ahead and write, do it right now. Okay. So I'm not sure if everyone can see me because uh, you're on their screen. So when that happens, we see your share screen, but then a small little screen where I am. So I know. So once upon a time, mm -hmm. a rabbit was walking and he saw a narwhal by the shore and they asked if they could play the next day. So they both went away and came back the next day, but the narwhal pushed him off the shore and then went away. I can't oh. really care. Exactly, I know the kitchen is really bad through my computer. So what happened in the end? In the end, the rabbit went to his dad and he, and he asked him why the narwhal did that. His dad said that it's, it's a matter of hypocrisy. It means that well, actually, this wasn't really hypocrisy, sort of. So he meant that he was nice. He was telling you to be nice, but he wasn't nice himself. Oh, I see. Now the rabbit, mm -hmm. now the rabbit knows how to deal with something like this. So he went away into his room and had a very good night's sleep. The end. Oh, Zoya, that is a wonderful story. Thank you for sharing it. I'm so Thank glad you. because we talked about hypocrisy last time. And that's a wonderful story you told. That's great. Okay, so I'm going to the next picture. See the little boy here? All right. Now, Ghazali says when you're making wudu, everybody, right? Uh, don't do more than three times. Don't waste water. Don't splash it all over the place because we don't like to waste water, do we? Right? No, we don't want to oh. waste water. No. And also, yeah. as he said before, Ghazali pointed out, don't get so exact with your wudu, so focused, you forget the inner wudu that you're really trying to do better and speak better and listen better, right? And what happens if somebody comes and talks to you when you're doing your wudu? You're not supposed to talk to other people while you're doing wudu. But if someone comes and says, Assalamu Alaikum, you can say, Assalamu Alaikum, this kind of thing. And then he said, if you do, now this is something that you could do if you wanted. If you do a really good wudu, I mean, it's so perfect. 
and you did everything right. And then you went and play, prayed two rakahs. If you prayed those two rakahs and you didn't think of anything else, guess what Imam al-Ghazali said? You would be as pure as the day on which you were born. So maybe mothers and fathers who are here at this event tonight, maybe you can try that out. Do as good a wudu as you can. I can see that. Two, rakaz, two bowings and have no other thought except your good heart. And when you do those two bowings, you will be as pure as the day you were born. Doesn't that sound like lovely? And children, there's another thing Imam al-Ghazali said. If you do wudu when it's uh, conditions are really difficult, let's say you're out in the snow and you're camping and it's snowing, or you can't find any water and you have to go to great difficulty to find water. Allah loves it when you go to, to when many people say, oh, we can't do wudu, there's no water nearby. We can't do wudu, this or that. But in fact, Allah loves it. If you have a difficult time, it's too cold, it's hard to find. If you do it, it makes your wudu even more pure. It makes your whole body especially pure also. And then there's another thing you can do. Let's say you have your wudu, you haven't broken it, right? You didn't use the toilet or anything. You're, you're, if you renew it anyway, when the next prayer comes, even when it's not broken, Ghazali says it's like nur ala nur, light upon light, right? And you get 10, 10 extra good deeds if you do that. And then another thing he says is that if, you, if, you, if you're doing wudu and you keep thinking of Allah, right? He will purify your entire body. If you, instead of maybe you're doing wudu and you're thinking about, oh, I wonder if I'm going to go over to that person's for a sleepover. I wonder about my doll. I've lost my doll. If you're, do, if you're thinking like that while you're doing wudu, that's not great. But if you completely think about Allah, right? Everything that's in you that's not good will flow out through your fingernails and through your feet. Everything will just flow out and you'll be shining, shining, shining inside. Now, let me do one more thing here. And this is just a picture of the story. Remember the story we heard about the little boy that knew a king was coming and he just polished the outside of his house, right? He's just polishing the outside, right? And here comes the king. If you invited a king to visit your home, would you only polish the door and leave ugly rubbish inside? How is this like doing wudu only with your outward movements and leaving your mind and heart thinking about anything else? You would polish the inside and the outside, not just the outside, because that's the king correct. Would be inside. That's correct. Would wouldn't Allah be happy to see you doing both? What would would Allah be happy if you're just doing the outside? No, He wants to He'd see the. Be happy in for both. Yeah, he wants to see. You want to see the inside also. Now, children. Okay, it's now for me. It's in five minutes is my bedtime. Now, when you get ready for bed at night, right? These children have gotten ready for bed. Okay, the prophet said, "Peace and blessings be upon him." There is no Muslim who goes to sleep in a state of purity, remembering God, and then arises from the night and asks for the goodness in this world and the next, except that Allah gives it to him. What you should know, children, is if you make wudu just before you go to bed, think how pure you'll feel when you get into bed. And just before you go to sleep, you could say this particular prayer. Whatever gifts uh, I us have are from you, Allah. So thank you and I give you praise, right? So, the, but you can say that before you go to bed, but the best thing you can do is to make wudu just before you go to sleep. And the last thing you say is a stock for Allah. Allah, forgive me if I did anything to disappoint you. So children, are you all going to try to do this? Do you want to go to sleep tonight with a, a golden heart? Yes. 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 Doesn't that look lovely? Wouldn't you like to be like that? Yes. yes. Very easy. Very yes. easy. Now, we're going to end this and talk about things that are beautiful. All right? One minute. All right.
All right, see these little children looking at the sunset? We're gonna end the night by talking about beauty. Do you know we, there's something that says, God is beautiful and he loves beauty. Allahu a Jamal wa Yaheb al Jamal. He loves, the, he loves beauty because beauty reminds us of paradise, doesn't it? Now, when you go out, do you wanna wear ugly, horrible clothes or do you wanna look beautiful all the time? You wanna look beautiful, don't you? You don't wanna show off because then you'd be looking ugly. You wanna look dignified and very beautiful because it's important to not just be beautiful looking, but you wanna act beautifully and you wanna be, and you wanna be beautiful, right? You wanna be dignified. You think if you say something and, and try to teach someone something and you look all ugly and sloppy, do you think anyone will want to learn from you? Would they believe you if you didn't look beautiful? No. No, 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 no. Here's some boys sitting looking at the mountains. Now, the, the book of purity, book, book three what? of Ghazali's 40 book, it ends with a very interesting <laughs> Children, children, have any of you wondered why do we have to do three of these and 10 of these and five of these? It's a good question. What are all these numbers about? Why? So, I have a question. Okay, what is the question? I mean, well, it's kind of like something that I, I like to talk. Oh, can't you make what do with like a walk or something? Like if yeah. if you're out on like um, a mountainside and, and you're lost, you can use a walk, right? Sure, of course. Any bowl. I once made wudu in a teacup. I was in Medina and it was winter and there was no water. And I took a little teacup smaller than this and just dipped my fingers in it. You see, now these little boys are sitting here and every, and they're saying to each other, why do we have to do five prayers? Why do we wash our hands three times? What are all these numbers about in wudu, right? And Ghazali tells us, it's impossible for us to understand. But what we're doing is, remember the angel Jibreel? He's the one who taught the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, how to do wudu. So we're... We're learning to do wudu from the angel Jibreel. We're copying what the prophet told us, but it, he was doing exactly what the angel did. So we are following a standard that's very special. And can you imagine when we do wudu in the way that we've been talking about tonight, we become very, very near to God. Wouldn't you like to be very, very near to God? Imagine feeling pure and doing exactly what the angel taught the prophet to do and they were copying, right? Now, last thing I wanna to say to you, right? If you did your wudu very sloppy, falling, slopping, stopping in the middle, putting your chewing gum down, changing, sloppy, right? Um, what would you think if you saw your grandmother doing wudu like that? Would you think that was all right or not? No. No. No, you don't definitely not. No. Definitely not. No, because what we want, we want people to be calm and dignified and present, you know, and humble and peaceful. And when we do the wudu, we should be like that, shouldn't we? Because we're doing something that the angel Gabriel was teaching. So it's very serious. It's not silly falling around and laughing and dropping a towel all over the place. So it's a time for you to be very present very dignified, very peaceful, very humble, right? Here's a little cartoon that a friend of mine in Egypt made about Imam al-Ghazali, okay? Up here it says, his clothes okay. and his hands were neat. His gaze was, I can't read it, something, sincere. His words were full of light. Sitting with him reminded me of heaven. So the little girl says, if you were sitting in silence with Imam al-Ghazali, what might he be teaching you by the way he was? What would you like to copy? His clothes? His hands were always neat. His gaze was so sincere. His words were full of light. So we wanna be that way. We want people when they come to be with us to notice that we are neat and dignified and our words are full of wisdom and we're calm and peaceful and beautiful. Isn't that true? Yeah. And these children, see these children here? 
they did yeah. so many good voodoos that the light was coming from their fingers and from their toes because they 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 imagine that they did such beautiful voodoo and Allah promised that the light will come from all the places you did voodoo carefully. A beautiful light will reach the places the ablution reached. And that comes from a Sahih Hadith of Muslim. So now children, I think you all have a very good idea about voodoo and about the state of being you wish to have while you're doing voodoo and the kinds of things you want to do with your heart. Yes, you're, you're raising your hand. Yes, um, Zoya. Yes. I just want to say that I know how the Prophet وسلم, got the five prayers a day. Tell us. Salah. Go ahead and tell us. Okay, so one day the Prophet was praying, I think, in the cave. If you know the Prophet, he was praying in the cave. I don't, I don't remember the name, but he was praying to Allah. So he came to Allah and gave him 500 or 50, I think 500 prayers yeah. for the humans to do a day. Yeah. When he was coming down from Allah's throne, I think, he saw Prophet Musa alayhi salam and he told him, why are you bringing 500 prayers? This is way too much. So he went back to Allah and he said that the Prophet Musa said that 500 was too much. So, so subhanahu wa ta'ala took down five, took it 495. Uh -huh. yeah. he, he was, a, no, no, yeah. He came, came, da, he came back down yeah. and saw Prophet Musa again. He said, 495 is still too much. So he went up back to Allah and said what the Prophet said back to him. So then Allah, so then every time the Prophet came back down, Musa was saying to him, this is way too much, lower. He went, finally he went back to Allah and every day, and every time he went back, Allah decreased it by five. Finally, he came to five, and the Prophet Musa didn't bother to say anything when he came back down. That is how the five prayers a day came to life. Yes, this I believe when the Prophet, peace and blessings. I knew that story him, too. He, he went on the, um, the Barak, and he went to Jerusalem, and he rose to the seven heavens. I think that was when he... Very good story you're, you're reminding me. Oh, thank you. Me. Even, I, they were telling him that the Muslims will say the five are too many, and he said, I can't go back. So we, that's I, a wonderful story. Thank you for including that. Yeah, that's not except good. we're able to do five. Yes, we are able to do okay. five. Well, so we've come to the end of our session. Would any of you like to say anything that you've learned that's useful to you? Anything that, uh, that has been good for you tonight that you yes. like? Yes. Yes. What? So you shouldn't like polish your outside, but do both inside and outside. So you can That's purify beautiful. your inside and your outside. That's wonderful. That's just purifying wonderful. Purifying just the inside. I want to say something. Doesn't want Everything you said helped my like if you're beautiful. Heart. If the case cares if you're beautiful. It's dear. better. It's better. It's better. Like if a king comes, it's better. It's better if the ha house is really messy on the outside. I don't wish very oh. neat on the inside. Yeah. And what about Every any mothers and fathers? Any mothers and fathers learned something they didn't know tonight? I. Uh, everything you said helped my spiritual heart. I always. Oh, I always watch videos of the prophets. Oh, how sweet. That's a, such a sweet thing. I'm so glad you loved it. Here's a mother who just wants to thank you for taking the time to walk us through all of this. It's beautiful. It's hard to explain things to little kids, but uh, thank you for doing this. I learned a lot about just making an intention and 
thinking about everything and blocking out everything else while I'm doing wudu and not just making it a routine, but you know, thinking about my hands as I'm washing, thinking about, mm-hmm. my, thinking about my ears. So thank you so much. You know, it, I've been meaning to make a chart to put in my bathroom to remind me. And today I made the chart because I was gonna be talking to the children. So I wanna thank the children for an opportunity for, for Auntie Aisha to finally sit down and make my chart because sometimes I'm afraid I might forget a prayer or an idea. Now we all know, you know, about the Basmala and about the Shahada. Who knew, you know? But this is all wonderful. And uh, we, we want to thank yes, Ya Imam Al Ghazali. Thank you, Ya Imam, for these tools for helping us. And we want to thank Munir for engineering this incredible gathering from around the world. Thank you, Brother Munir. Thank you. Thank you for the lesson. Thank you. 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 I'm so happy to be with you all. I just love tonight. So I'm going to go to bed now, all right? Because it's very dark and very late here. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Bye.